Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. The last person to see Jeffrey Epstein alive was his ex-girlfriend, Corinna Shuliak. Now, there's not too much known about Corinna Shuliak, and there's no indication that she is a target of the FBI, but one has to wonder, what does Ms. Shuliak know? She spent a lot of time with Jeffrey Epstein. She spent a lot of intimate time with Jeffrey Epstein. Does she know anything that could help the prosecutors? Perhaps. I think that it's an avenue that is worth exploring if you're the prosecution, or perhaps they have explored it already. Ms. Shuliak has been spotted for the first time since Jeffrey Epstein's death shopping in New York City. The Daily Mail has some pictures of her out and about doing some shopping and uh, being seen out in the fr- for the first time in public since Jeffrey Epstein's death. Now, I'm sure a lot of that probably also had to do with the pandemic, but the Daily Mail captured these pictures. So let's dive into the article and see what the Daily Mail has to say about Ms. Shuliak. Headline, Jeffrey Epstein's obsessively jealous and fiercely loyal girlfriend, 31, is spotted shopping in New York. The first time she's been seen since it was revealed she was the last person to speak to the pedophile before he committed suicide, allegedly. This article was authored by Laura Collins. Obsessively jealous and fiercely loyal, this is the woman who called herself Jeffrey Epstein's girlfriend and was the last person to speak with the monstrous pedophile before his prison death last August. Now... Right away in the first paragraph here, it, it says she called herself Jeffrey Epstein's girlfriend. Now, I don't know of any sources that have Jeffrey Epstein calling her his girlfriend. And it might have just been one of those things that was assumed considering they spent so much time together. But I still believe to this day that someone like Jeffrey Epstein is incapable of true love. Somebody like Jeffrey Epstein cannot be in love with anybody but himself and the power. That's the kind of person Jeffrey Epstein is. So it always cracks me up when we hear reports about so-called girlfriends or how he was romantically involved with Ghislaine Maxwell. Oh, please give me a break. Seen here exclusively, and for the first time since her identity was revealed in March, Corinna Shuliak, 31, was with Epstein on his private jet when he was arrested last July as the FBI swooped on him when he landed from Paris back at Teterboro, New Jersey. So again, she was very, very close with Jeffrey Epstein, obviously. Was she a girlfriend? Again, I'm not willing to take that leap, to be honest with you, because I don't believe this man was capable of loving somebody or sacrificing the way you need to do to have a a proper relationship. So I'll say a companion. That's what I feel, right? Jeffrey Epstein had some companions. Shuliak from Belarus was known as the inspector for for her obsessive snooping on Epstein during their relationship that lasted up to a decade. So she was 31 when he passed away, and if their relationship lasted up to a decade, that means she was 21 when she came into Jeffrey Epstein's atmosphere, so roughly 2010, 2011. And the reports of her being called the inspector... I find to be pretty interesting. I wonder who this source is that's divulging this sort of um, inside information about Jeffrey Epstein's inner workings and the inner circle. Now, DailyMail.com has these exclusive pictures that offer the first glimpse of Shuliak's furtive existence since then. Dressed casually in white shorts and a lilac polo shirt, with her long brown hair pulled back into a loose ponytail, nothing about Shuliak's low-key appearance suggests the world of wealth and depravity in which she once moved. Well, I highly doubt that 
with Epstein gone that she has the, you know, funds to maybe dress the way she used to. Because from what I'm seeing here, she looks like she doesn't have A, zero style. B, doesn't look like she's spending very much money on her clothes here. And C, that hair though. She needs to go see Nancy Pelosi's hairstylist up in San Fran and get a blowout or whatever because this hair though. Holy Toledo. Shuliak spent close to an hour inside a nutritional health store on New York's Upper East Side before browsing the aisles of a nearby pharmacy and purchasing toiletries, including hair care products, photos taken last week's show. Well, from the photos, she definitely can use those hair care products right now. She got some serious frizz going on. Holy Toledo. And, you know, you know, I don't have uh, very much hair, right? I'm not the kind of person that is a, uh, a, a hair aficionado over here, but holy cow. You need to get some of that non-frizz hairspray, sweetheart. And all of these pictures are um, available for you in the article as well. So when you click on the link inside of the description box, it'll take you to the article, obviously. And then there's all of these pictures of her shopping, wearing like this goofy, like purple button up shirt and these like kind of like Tennessee white shorts. And then these like weird ass, goofy ass Nikes. But next to her in the picture, the kid in the cargo pants is even goofier. Dude's rocking some like blue Crocs or something, walking across the street in Manhattan. I mean, come on, buddy. So it's, uh, anyway, you'll want to check out all of these pictures for sure. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, the Daily Mail, whoever took these pictures for them, took a whole bunch of her shopping and you know, whatever. She was spotted just a few blocks away from Epstein's imposing Beau Arts Mansion near Central Park. Epstein is now known to have committed countless crimes and entertained some of the richest and most powerful people in the world, including Prince Andrew in that Upper East Side property. It is now on the market at an asking price of $88 million. I, I wish I had the money. If I had that kind of money, right, I would buy this place and I would completely gut it, renovate it, and turn it into something else, something for the good. Maybe some kind of home for abused women and children, something like that. But I don't know how anyone could ever purchase a house like this and live in it. I mean, talk about demented but then again, you know, you all you have to do is hop on the internet for five minutes and you see that the world is populated by a bunch of deranged maniacs. Shuliak herself was pictured coming and going from the home on numerous occasions, including exclusive pictures obtained by DailyMail.com back in December 2015 and again in June 2016. But her relationship with the di disgraced financier, pedophile, stretched back much further than that. So, Shuliak came into the picture after Epstein's first arrest and first prosecution. And again, another Eastern European girl. I would like to know her backstory. I would really like to know the backstory of Miss Shuliak. And I wonder if she would ever grant any interviews with anybody. All of you uh, enterprising independent journalists out there, if you're listening to the podcast, I think that might be an awesome, awesome story for somebody to kind of get a look behind the scenes. If somebody could get her to sit down for an interview, I think that that could reveal a whole lot about the day in question at the very least. Kind of like um, from her perspective, uh, the day of Epstein getting arrested, that would be a cool piece to read. Shuliak arrived in the U.S. in 2009, and the then 20-year-old is understood to have come to Epstein's attention soon afterwards. The depth of her significance and loyalty to the late 66-year-old financier, pedophile, came to light only recently with the testimony of a source in their circle. So, a source in their circle. Now, I wonder who that could possibly be. Who is this source that the Daily Mail has cultivated. 
The source told DailyMail.com that, while many friends and associates dropped Epstein following his sex crime conviction in Florida in August 2010, Shuliak remained loyal. Oh, that's a bunch of BS. Dropped Jeffrey Epstein? You mean just took their relationship private? That's what you mean, right? Because nobody dropped him. We know that Jess Staley was still cruising over to the island. We know about Glenn Dubin. We know about all of these people that were still hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, Prince Andrew, Katie Couric, George Stepanopoulos, Woody Allen. The list goes on, folks. So again, I don't want to hear that everybody abandoned Epstein. I don't want to, I don't, that's, that's just not the case. That is not the case. Maybe publicly people ran for cover, but behind the scenes, well, we know the score was a lot different. Back then, Epstein served 18 months, much of it on day release, for a single count of procuring a girl below the age of 18 for prostitution. That's called molestation. That's called child abuse. That's called pedophilia. Okay, this guy is just a sick, disgusting bastard. The leniency of the charges and the sentencing has long been the subject of public outrage. But according to the source... Everyone turned their back on him after prison and denounced him as an antichrist, even his closest friends. No one stayed with him except Corinna, who was there until the very last moment. Oh, spare me. This is such BS. Whoever this source is, is obviously running some sort of cover fire for themselves and the other co-conspirators who still had a relationship with Epstein. Please do not try and gaslight me. Whoever the source here is thinks they're smooth, thinks they're slick, but they must have forgot that we have been following this from the very beginning, that we have covered all of these stories and we know that Jeffrey Epstein was still in contact with a bevy of these people after his first arrest. Unlike Epstein's high-profile co-conspirator, Fellow child abuser, general all-around scuzzbag and bipedal serpent, Ghislaine Maxwell, Shuliak has had no public dealings with the FBI. And it has been previously reported that she had no exposure to the pedophile sex trafficking activity. Well, that might be the case, but I still think that she should be subpoenaed and sat down and spoken with. If she is somebody who was so close to Epstein and they, they called her the investigator, well, I think that she might have some information that might be important. Now, I'm not saying that she was involved in the trafficking scheme. I don't, I would never make that leap without any evidence, obviously. But when you're intimately around somebody like Epstein all the time, you were flying with him the day he got uh, arrested and sent to the clink. Well, I think you might have some information that maybe might help the investigation a little bit. But the closeness and duration of the relationship and Shuliak's jealousy over the man she believed to have loved her may raise some questions as to just what she knew. The same source told DailyMail.com Corinna was nicknamed the Inspector because she was madly jealous over Epstein and was always investigating who he was in contact with. So if that's the case, and she was the investigator, and she was doing all of this investigative work like Inspector Gadget when she was with Epstein, you mean to tell me she never stumbled across anything untowards? We know Epstein was abusing girls all the way up to 2018, according to the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands. So that means while he was, he was with Miss Shuliak, he was also abusing girls at the same time. So did Miss Shuliak stumble across anything like that? Did she save any of those messages? These are questions that the investigators most assuredly would want to know. Certainly her own relationship with Epstein was one that saw her indebted to the late billionaire in more ways than one. Again, it's all about money and power, right? Jeffrey Epstein and people like him bring girls over here from places like Belarus and they use their money and their power to coerce them into a lifestyle that they probably would have never fallen into otherwise. Over and over again, we see these scumbags Use 
and abuse the most vulnerable amongst us. Epstein paid for expensive medical treatment required by her mother and reportedly may have helped fund the upscale home in which her parents now live in the Belarus capital, Minsk. For her part, Shuliak attended Columbia University, an education that appears likely to have been funded by Epstein. In a bizarre twist, she is she is a registered dentist in the states of Florida and California and is listed as having her own practice in the Virgin Islands at an address linked to Epstein. So, remember the dental char- the dental chairs down in the Virgin Islands? It all starts to make sense now, doesn't it, folks? It's like Chekhov's gun in this story, right? You know, with Chekhov's gun, he sets the stage, he loads the gun in chapter one, and then he doesn't fire that son of a bitch till chapter 10. And that's like what we have here, right? The dental chair, and then you find out Shuliak's a dentist. Things start to make more sense. Was Shuliak using her dental skills down in the Virgin Islands? Maybe on some of these other survivors, on some, on some of these girls that were being held captive at the island. Again, these are just questions, some very basic questions that the investigators most assuredly would want to know. But it makes a lot of sense when you start putting the picture, the pieces together and you think about the dental chair, the neurosurgeon, et cetera, et cetera. Jeffrey Epstein collected quite the menagerie of people. DailyMail.com has previously revealed that a dentist chair was among the items that Epstein had shipped to his private island in the Caribbean, while photographs also show that he had a dentist chair at his Florida mansion. It is understood that he used to fix up the teeth of women close to him, a duty that, with her training, Shuliak could have easily performed. And there you go, the Daily Mail asking that same question that I just asked. And remember, I don't read these articles beforehand. So a lot of times I might have, I might say something and then it'll be in the article later on. And it's just basically following the common thread, there's only one conclusion you can come to, right? So here we are. And that's where I'm at with Shuliak here. It's obvious that she had this dental training. So the dental chair was more than likely used by Shuliak to fix the teeth of these girls for Jeffrey Epstein. Very, very uh, obvious what was going on there. But while Epstein may have funded much of her life in the States, it was at considerable cost to Shuliak, whose virginity he reportedly took. Again, that's, I don't, you know, those kind of statements are, I mean, how do you verify something like that, right? So it's just another uh, salacious statement. But you know what? It adds a little more context to the relationship of control, right? When a guy takes a girl's virginity, it's, you know, usually a, a big deal. It's a serious situation, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it probably led into the fact that she was so obsessed with Epstein. And while she viewed herself as his girlfriend, she might equally be considered a victim by others. Shulia took part in a same-sex marriage to Jennifer Kalin, another of Epstein's associates, in October 2013, and divorced her last July following the pedophile's arrest. The Daily News reported this as a sham marriage designed to keep Shuliak in the U.S. And when um, we first started reporting on Shuliak, we went into that whole story and how um, Jeffrey Epstein manipulated the immigration system all the time with stuff like this to get these girls... uh, um, the, the proper identification and papers to stay in the United States so that he could exploit them more. And it's just been a, a revolving door for Epstein and his co-conspirators when it comes to girls like Shuliak. Speaking in general terms about arranged marriages, Epstein survivor's lawyer Sigrid McCauley said this was a known instrument of the billionaire's international sex trafficking scheme. 100%. Look, this wasn't just about the sex trafficking or the abuse. It was about so many other things. And the legacy media refuses to do more than just scratch the surface. 
It's so obvious what was going on here and how vast this criminal enterprise was. According to Macaulay, Jeffrey Epstein's international sex trafficking ring harmed an incomprehensible number of girls and these sham same-sex marriages served as a basic and important purpose for Epstein's trafficking operation because they enabled Epstein to get citizenship for girls he wanted to keep in this country without facing a high level of scrutiny in the citizenship process. And look... What, you don't think he was advised how to do this by his high-profile friends who wrote the laws? Please, give me a break. And this all goes back to my rant the other day about making sure we elect quality individuals as politicians. I know that's almost impossible considering the pool we have to select from, but we need to demand better from these people. But whatever the true nature and complexity of her relationship with the depraved predator, Shuliak is said to have been devastated and blindsided by his death. He was found hanging in a cell in New York's Metropolitan Correctional Center while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges last August. There was, apparently, nothing in his last communications to suggest that he was was a despairing, despondent, suicidal person. DailyMail.com has reached out to Shuliak for comment. And we've heard this from several people about Jeffrey Epstein towards the end there. He wasn't despondent. He wasn't sad. He wasn't the kind of guy that was ready to commit suicide. In fact, he thought he was going to beat this. He thought he had a good case. So I think that the real conspiracy theory when we're talking about Jeffrey Epstein's death, the conspiracy theorists, are the ones who believe... The official narrative. That's more of a conspiracy of saying that Jeffrey Epstein was clipped or was uh, taken out at this point, in my opinion. I mean, nobody says the guy was suicidal. He thought he was going to beat the case. The narcissism that he has and the, the fact that he had so much power and all of this blackmail intelligence on people, he thought he was going to beat this, the case. So the whole, oh, he died, and if you think, I mean, he killed himself, and if you think otherwise, you're a conspiracy theorist. That whole entire shtick is played out, garbage, trash, done with, all right? It's rather obvious to anyone paying attention. This isn't a conspiracy theory. This is a very large, intercontinental, vast cover-up. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody. I'll be back later on today. I hope all of you enjoy your Saturday. And if you're into sports, well... Today is a fantastic day, folks. College football, hockey, UFC, you name it. So I hope everybody has an enjoyable Saturday, and I will be back later on to pick up where we left off.